Now that the car is painted, at least somewhat, it's time to do the fun stuff, assembly. And I really want to get that wiring harness back in there before I forget how everything goes together. But there are a couple things I need to address with you guys. Now I knew not everyone would like the color and that's okay. It is a Porsche color, which is kind of cool and it's still gray. It's better than Atlas gray in my opinion. And it's different. This is a hodgepodge of two cars. I'm taking two cars, merging them into one. I figured if I'm diving into it this far, the car is already going to be a little devalued versus, you know, a completely non-wrecked OEM one. So I might as well add my flair to it, make it a little fun because I can't really see me selling this thing. And I think some people commented before they watched the whole video and they were saying like, I was doing a bad job painting it. Why was I painting it outside? Guys, I only painted things that you're not really gonna see. You'll see the door jams, you'll see part of the engine bay, but not really. I painted non-important items just so I could get this thing assembled, start the assembly process. If I was the one to paint the whole car, it wouldn't, it wouldn't look very good. I mean, come on guys, this totally looks like a pro did this. Yikes but I'm happy with it and that's what matters. So let's move on to assembly. It's gonna be nice because I can get this engine and transmission out of the middle of my garage as well as the wiring harness that's been sitting over there just staring at me and I gotta unwrap some other painted parts like in the engine bay and the trunk, install some things in the door jam area, simple stuff before I move on to the wiring harness. wanted to start with some small and simple parts. The door jams had a good many parts that needed to be in there. The latches, these little triangle pieces, and the reality of it is I'm just putting off the daunting task of putting the wiring harness and dash bar back in. The nice part is now that I have this car partially painted, I can take parts directly off the old car and put them on the new car without any waiting in between. It's going to make assembly go a lot faster and smoother and I don't have to worry about forgetting how to assemble certain things. easiest job of them all simply unmasking, untaping, untinfoiling all the parts that I covered up prior to the paint job. A simple but satisfying project. Okay, now the real fun and real assembly begins. I think I'm gonna start in the front end because there's a lot of parts and pieces that go in the trunk. It seems like a nice, easy place to start. The first step is probably to empty the front trunk, which I've been using basically as storage for a whole bunch of parts that I've removed. Out of all the parts in the front end, the brake booster, brake lines, and ABS pump, definitely the most difficult.
once I got that out of the way, it was simple enough to bring it over to the new car and start installing it. Obviously, I can't install old parts on the new chassis without first cleaning them. And of course, the cleaner of choice is glass cleaner. It really works well on everything. I did try to protect the fresh paint as best I could, but at the end of the day, there will be some scratches from assembly, but you'll never see them because it's, it's buried between plastic panels, covers, fabric, all sorts of things. Yes, sir. Excellent progress. That should be the worst part of up here, I think. These things are absolutely clogged. I know, shocking, right? All sorts of gunk in there. Both of them. Between all the grommets, the covers, the hoses, there are a ton of parts that needed to be removed from the front of this car. This took me hours, much longer than expected, but it was all going very smoothly. Almost all the parts that came off this car were in pretty excellent condition, minus the smashed quarter panel. But the battery tray was definitely worse for wear. It had a good bit of rust on it, mainly surface rust, so it needed some grinding, some cleaning, and then a good coat of Rust-Oleum paint should fix this right up. While I waited for the battery tray to dry, of course there were a ton more parts to install up here. I guess I really don't need this windshield to be here in my way anymore. It's really not helping anything. It's just in the way. Did I mention there were a lot of parts in the trunk?
little things, you know? This looks a lot better with that not being painted. I didn't realize I left that in there. All right, just about done with the trunk. Just a few parts left. Oh yeah, I do have that pesky fuel filler neck to install. That was fun trying to wedge that in there. I'm really pleased with how the front end's coming together. It's like almost done. It's as far as I wanna go until the battery tray, the paint has cured, and until I get the wiring harness in. So speaking of that, time to stop ignoring that. I'm gonna put the wiring harness in. Hopefully it goes as smoothly as this because this all went super smooth and really, really nice. Like I said, lots and lots and lots of parts go up here in this area. There are still a lot more to install, but all the main ones, the hard to install ones are done. You can see in the old trunk, I guess brake fluid had spilled or leaked and it just absolutely ate that old paint away. Hopefully it doesn't happen to my fresh paint job on the new chassis. This is tangled now, so that's, that's good. That's great. Here comes the fun part. Time to put all those labels to use. Dash sticker, okay. So this is the main part of the dash. Passing your rear connect, okay, this is good. This is very good. I don't want to risk it. It's been a few days, so I'm hoping this paint will be just fine. I was not real keen on putting any kind of adhesive on fresh paint, but it's better than dragging this giant wiring harness over the fresh paint and potentially ruining it. flip-flop driver and passenger because I'm an idiot. All right. That's all right, we can fix this. Now while I'm pondering all my financial decisions and purchases with both these 997s and the whole disaster surrounding this build, let me take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, which is a good financial decision, the Ridge Wallet. And these are some of their newer additions, Hyper Lime. This is a wallet and of course a matching key case. And if you go to the ridge.com forward slash Ross, you can get 10% off your own wallet. Ridge Wallets expand to hold up to 12 cards plus cash all while remaining super slim. And their key cases hold one to six keys, all securely without any jingling. And when you buy both of these together, you get up to 30% off your order. These things make excellent, excellent gifts and they come in over 30 different styles and colors. 
So if you'd like to get your own or get one for a friend, family member, or for someone as a gift, go to theridge.com forward slash Ross to get 10% off your order. You can get any of these sweet colors plus a whole bunch more using discount code Ross. A huge thank you to The Ridge for providing a whole bunch of awesome wallets and for sponsoring another video. I got both grommets through the firewall and then it was time to install this power distribution box which gets bolted through the firewall and then that eventually connects to the positive side of the battery. All was going well so far. Well, got an absolute boatload of work done. I'm really happy with the progress so far. But that's enough for tonight. I got that like sticky electrical tape feeling all over my fingers. Got to clean that off. Then I'll come back at it tomorrow. Probably start with attempting to put the dash bar back in and that'll really help route all of the wiring harness inside. With all four grommets, yes, four, slid into place the wiring harness is sitting where it should everything is falling into place as it should now it's just time to get the rest of the interior in there no, just kidding there are still more modules connectors electronics plugins boxes bolts nuts and screws that need installed in the front end but this really is the last part of it at least until i dive into the front wiring harness, which leads to the headlights and fog lights and turn signals, all that fun stuff. Phew, with that out of the way, let's grab some interior parts that I've had kept in storage and start to thin out this pile of parts inside my house. These parts also need cleaned, not from sitting in my house, but from sitting in the car in a body shop for the last five years. I don't remember if I should do this first or the heater box. This. Hold that up out of the way somehow. This job I was especially not looking forward to. Reality of it is I should have had a second person with me. This is not something that's easy to do by yourself. took a break from the struggle bus to grab the actual brackets which hold the dash bar in place which were still in the old car. They would be needed, obviously, for this job. Ah, oh, this one's old. I mentioned how bad this sucks. The whole process of getting this bar in its final position honestly probably took me nearly an hour. Oh, oh, oh my God. Well, that's something. That was the worst. I did notice a little bit of coolant in here, so I hope no more comes out. I think I got it all out. I really don't want this spilling everywhere. It's gonna make a horrible, horrible mess. Yeah, I feel like I should have put the heater box in before the dash bar, but all is not lost. I can sneak it in there. This needs to go on top. I gotta figure that out. But that's close. Gotta look at some old pictures.
Certainly thankful for all the pictures I took. The reality of it is I should have taken more, but I took enough to get me in a position where I could get everything installed as it should have been from the factory. Heater box is fully installed. That wasn't too bad except for that one nut by where the AC lines go. It's like almost impossible to get to. Most of the stuff on this car and on Porsches in general seem easy to work on. That was horrendous. If you ever have to replace your heater core, good luck. Now I need to make sure all the wiring harness is in its correct position. I think I want to do the airbag, make sure my brake pedal's hooked up. Lots of fiddly bits like that. Still can't figure out and remember where this goes. Well, good thing it's all on video then. Pretty good video if I do say so myself. I'd subscribe to this guy. I think it connects to the dash. Definitely messed up some order of operations here as putting the vents in required me to remove some things and reinstall some things, but I figured it out eventually. I grabbed these zip ties because I figured I'd need to reattach the harness to the dash bar, thinking it wouldn't be secure with the OEM clips, thinking they may be broken, but to my surprise, none of them broke when I removed them. They all snapped back into place and I needed zero zip ties. All that was left was to fully bolt in the dash bar and give it a wiggle to make sure it was tight. Obviously a big mess over here. It's all of this crap and this, and I don't remember how this goes in there, how this mounts, so I'm gonna try to figure out this big mess. Hopefully it's not too terrible, but it's gonna be. Perfectly honest, I had not a clue how I removed this stuff, nor did I take any good pictures of it. So it was all a mixture of a guessing game, a Google search, and about an hour of my time being in uncomfortable positions to get this stuff back in place. I also found that I didn't put in the slave cylinder grommets and this car must have been an automatic because of that plug. That's where the slave cylinder goes. So I put in the plugs from the old crash car and then it was time to install the slave cylinder which again you have to get in an uncomfortable position to do so. While I was down there, I also had to hook up the brake pedal to the master cylinder as I hadn't done that yet. It's a relatively simple job, but all that fiddly stuff is done. That was the worst. And after that, I could install the new freshly painted battery tray with some fresh non-rusted nuts. All the grunt work, or some people would say the work, is pretty much done. So I think the worst is behind me. It's time to move forward and really get this car together. I think I'm ahead of schedule and this is going to be running and driving really, really soon. That was a monumental amount of work. I'm beat. Very happy with the progress on the car. So till next time.